Hey everyone, welcome to part 104 of my Pokemon game series Ingenuity. So in this video, we'll refactor our party screen to use the generic selector component and the state stack architecture. And we'll also implement the grid selection in the generic selector so that we can use it in the party screen. So let's look at how to implement this. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, let's make the party screen use the generic selector for selection. So let me open the party screen script. So here, instead of writing this code for the selection, we have to make it use the generic selector component. Right. So first, I'll make the party screen inherit the selection UI class. Okay. So to use selection UI, we have to import this namespace. And here also we can use the text slot because we are just changing the color of the Pokemon's name for showing the selection. So here also we can use the text slot, just like we used in the menu controller. Okay. So now from here, we can remove all the code that's handling the selection right now, because the code to handle the selection is already in the base class. Okay. So let me just get rid of the selection variable. And also we don't need the called from property here. This was kind of like a hack that we used to get the state from which the party screen was called, right? So we don't need that anymore because we are using a state stack architecture and we have a track of all the previous states. So I'll just go ahead and remove this. Okay. And then we don't need the handle update function anymore. So I'll also remove that. And I'll also remove the update member selection function. Okay, so now when we set the party data, we have to set the data to the selection UI by calling the set items function, right? So to the set items function, we have to pass a list of text slot because we are using text slot for the selection. Okay, so in our case, the text slot will be attached to the party member UI game object. So we have a list of it in member slots, right? So from the member slots list, we can use the get component function to get the text slot. But since this is a list, we have to get the text slot component for all the member slot elements, right? So I'll use the select function here. So to use the select function, we have to import the link namespace. Okay. And from here, for each member, we can call the get component function and get the text slot. Okay. So let me just store this in a variable called text slots. So now we can call the set items function and we can pass the text slots. Okay. But we don't have to pass all the text slots in the list. We only have to pass the text slots in which we want to show some Pokemon data. Right. So by default, there will be six member slots. But if there are only four Pokemon, then we should only pass four text slots here. Right. So from here, we can just take the text slot based on the count of the Pokemon. 
okay and uh, we have to convert this into a list because the set items function takes a list all right so this will set the text slots item into the selection ui and by the way we don't have to call this anymore so let me just get rid of that that will be called from the set items function okay so this is all we have to do and the selection will be automatically handled by the selection ui class okay and by the way we have an error here so this is just a property that we are using to make it easy to get the selected member so here the issue is we don't have the selection variable anymore the selection variable is inside the selection ui class right now right so we don't have access to that from the party screen class because it is a private variable so what we can do is we can just make this protected so that we'll be able to access it from the subclasses okay so now we can access the selected item from here all right so that error is fixed so now we have refactored our party screen to use the generic selector but if i go to unity now you can see that we have few errors so this is because previously the handle update function of the party screen was taking the on selector and on back actions as a parameter right so the old code will give us an error because of this so we can just get rid of this code because we are not going to use this everything will be handled when we call state machine to execute right so we don't have to execute different states from here itself okay let me also remove this comment to keep the code shorter okay and we should have some more errors because we are also using the party screen from other areas like the inventory ui and battle system so let me just comment the function in those areas okay so next let me go into the battle system so here we have lots of errors so for now i'll just comment all these and later we'll also switch to a state stack architecture for our battle system so we won't be needing this code anyway okay so note that these functionalities will not work in the battle system right now because we have commented this code but in the future we'll also convert the battle system to use state stack architecture and we'll make this work okay so let me check if i have any more errors so we have some more errors in the battle system so let me also come in that code okay we'll fix all this when we convert the battle system into state stack architecture all right so now we should have any more errors okay so let's also go ahead and attach the text slots to the party screen so let me enable the party screen first and inside the party list we have to attach the text slot to the party member prefab so i'll go inside the prefab and i'll assign the text slot okay so here we also have to assign the text so name text is what we want to highlight during the selection right so let me just assign the name text into the text slot and now if we go back all the party member prefabs objects should have text slot assigned to it okay so let me just disable this and go out of the ui canvas okay so now the party screen will use the generic selector for handling selection so next we also have to make it use the state stack architecture right so let me go inside the game states folder and here i'll create a new script for the party state so i'll just call this game party state 
okay so the reason why i'm calling it game party state is because we'll also have a party state in the battle system okay so this one is going to be a state of the game controller so to use a state class we have to import gd util start state machine namespace okay and this is going to be a state of game controller all right so now we have to implement the game party state just like we implement the menu state okay so first i'll make this a singleton so that we can easily reference it from other states so for that let me just copy the code from the game menu state and i just change the type to game party state okay so next we need to implement the enter function of the state so let me go ahead and override the enter function and from here we also have to cache the game controller so let me go ahead and do that okay and when we enter the party state we have to enable the party screen game object right so first let me create a serialized field reference for the party screen all right and from the enter function i'll just enable the party screen game object okay so next we have to subscribe to the on selected and on back events of the party screen right just like we did from the menu state we have to subscribe to these events of the selection ui so let me create functions of them so first i'll create a function called on pokemon selected and it will have an integer parameter for the selection okay so from the game party screen when we select a pokemon we have to open the summary screen right but we don't have that right now so i'll just write a to do comment for now okay and let me also write a debug.log statement so that we can make sure that it is working so next let me create the on back function and from this function we just have to pop the party state right so i'll call game controller dot state machine dot pop okay so now let's assign these functions to the on selected and on back events of the selection ui okay so that's all we have to do in the enter function so next we have to implement the execute function so let me go ahead and overwrite that okay so from here all we have to do is call party screen dot handle update for handling the selection okay so next we have to overwrite the exit function and from here we have to disable the party screen and we also have to unsubscribe to the on selected and on back events right so let me just copy these three lines and i'll disable it instead of enabling it and i'll unsubscribe from the event so let me change it to minus equal to okay so this is all we have to do from the game party state so now from the menu state if pokemon is selected then we can go ahead and push the party state right so let me just get rid of the debug log and from here if the selection is equal to zero that means pokemon is selected from the menu then we can go ahead and push the party state so i'll call game controller dot state machine dot push 
and for the state i'll pass game party state dot instance okay so this should open the party screen when we select pokemon from the menu so let's go to unity and test if it's working so first we have to assign the game party state to our game controller so let me go ahead and assign that okay and by the way this also needs a reference for the party screen so let me just drag and drop the party screen and assign it okay so that is all we have to do so let's try testing this now okay so if i select pokemon from the menu as you can see that we are opening the party screen but we have some issues with the selection so the issue is all the items that are not selected doesn't have any color so it's just blank here only the selected item and the first item is blue okay so we need to fix this so the reason why this is happening is because in our text slot we are caching the original color from the awake function right but the problem with this is sometimes the on selection changed function might be called before even the awake is called okay the on selection change function is being called from the selection ui right so this might be called even before the awake function is called in the text slot so when that is called the color will be set as the original color which does not have any value because it's not set from the awake so that is being stored as the color of the text and that is the reason why we don't see any color for the unselected text okay so using awake here is not really dependable so we have to put it in some other function like init and we have to make sure to call the init before the on selection changed is called okay so what i'll do is in the i selectable item interface i'll also create another function called init okay and let me go ahead and implement that function from here okay and i'll cast the original color from the init function instead of doing it from the awake function okay and then from the selection ui we have to call the init before the on selection changed function is called for the first time okay so the on selection changed is first call when we are setting the items using the set items function okay so just before that we can go ahead and call the init function for each item so for each item we have to call the init function okay so now we can guarantee that this will be executed before this okay so let's go to unity and test again okay let me open up the party screen so yeah now that issue is gone but now another problem is right now the selection is linear right we haven't implemented the grid selection yet in the selection ui so the selection is linear we can only press the up and down input so let's go ahead and implement grid selection in the selection ui okay so here right now we only have list selection so we should also add grid selection so first what i'll do is i'll create a enum called selection type okay so this can be either list or grid and then let me create a variable for the selection type okay and then if the selection type is grid then we also have to know the size of the grid right so it can be grid with two columns or three columns or four columns etc so i'll also create an integer variable to store that and i'll set it 
to two by default. Okay. So next, I'll create a function to set these values. So here, let me create a public function called set selection settings. And this will take the selection type and the grid width as a parameter. Okay. So let me assign these values to our private variables. Okay. So we can use this function to set the selection type and the grid width. And now from here, if the selection type is equal to list, then we can call the handle list selection function, just like before. But if it's grid, then we have to call another function called handle grid selection. Okay. Let me just fix the alignment here. So if you have not created this function yet, so let's go ahead and create it here. So the grid selection is going to be a lot similar to the list selection, but the only difference is in the grid selection, we also have to get the horizontal input and move left and right. Okay. So let me just copy this code from the handle list selection function and I'll just modify that for implementing the grid selection. Okay. So the first thing, we also have to get the horizontal input. So let me go ahead and get that. Okay. And now, since we also have the horizontal input, we should also check if the horizontal input is greater than 0.2. Okay. So here I'll check if the absolute value of the particular input is greater than 0.2 or the absolute value of the horizontal input is greater than 0.2 okay if any of these cases are true then we have to change the selection so next from here if the value of the vertical input is greater than 0.2 then we have to update the selection vertically and if the horizontal input is greater than 0.2 then we have to update the selection horizontally right but there might be cases when both horizontal and vertical input are greater than 0.2. So for example, if the joystick is pointed at a diagonal direction, then both will be greater than 0.2. Right. So what we can do is we can just take the one with the largest value. Okay. So if the absolute value of the horizontal input is greater than the absolute value of the vertical input then we can change the selection horizontally so this will change the selection horizontally right so here we have to use the value of the horizontal input to update the selection and otherwise we have to update the selection vertically right so for that we can use the vertical input and we also have to multiply it with the grid width, right? So if the grid is two columns long, then to move down vertically, we have to increment the index by two, right? So we have to multiply it with the grid width, okay? And by the way, we don't have to negate the horizontal input. The reason is because when we press the right input, we want to increment the selection, right? And we want to decrement it when we press list. So we don't have to negate this. You only have to negate this in the case of vertical input. All right. So this is all you have to do to handle grid selection. So now if any selection UI needs grid selection, then we just have to call this function and set the selection type. Okay. 
by default it will be list but if you want to change it into grid then we just have to call this function so let me go ahead and call this from the party screen and let me change selection to grid so from here i'll call set selection settings and for the selection type i'll pass grid okay and for the grid width i'll pass two because our party screen grid has two columns so now let's go to unity and let's test if the grid selection is working okay so now if i open the party screen as you can see that the grid selection should be working okay so yeah it's working for me and by the way if i select a pokemon and press z then we should display the index here all right and also if i press x we should pop the party state and we should go back to the menu state okay so that is working fine so here in the state stack as you can see all the states that we have so that is pretty useful in case you want to debug anything all right so we have refactored our party screen to use the state stack architecture and the generic selector and we have also implemented grid selection in our selection ui so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we'll refactor the inventory state to use the state stack architecture and the generic selector all right so before you leave make sure to leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out also you can support the series on patreon if you can afford it all right so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video